Jurgen Klopp was enjoying some much-needed rest and relaxation in Dubai during the recent winter break when he was approached by a bloke in a flowery shirt. It was a Bolton fan begging the Liverpool manager to allow Connor Bradley back on loan to the League One side. Too late, came the response from Klopp, sporting a, you'll never walk alone, cap which he made a point to put on to wind up a Manchester United fan asking for a photo. And, too late, was the gist of most responses to clubs who came knocking for Bradley in the summer, too. After scoring five goals and notching up five assists from right back at the third-tier club, Klopp and his coaching staff had seen enough to conclude that Bradley was to play a pivotal role in this new iteration of the Reds team which the German manager dubbed, Liverpool 2. Zero, Bradley was the name on everyone's lips in a preseason camp in Bavaria with pleasing performances against Karlsruhe and Grutha Firth, but that was the last sight of him until the turn of the year, with the 20-year-old missing more than four months with a back injury. Now he is the name on everyone's lips, not just those in the cop who chanted his name multiple times in a man-of-the-match performance against billionaire boys Chelsea on Wednesday night. He scored a goal, assisted two more and put in an imperious defensive display at the other end. That was his fifth start in a row for the Reds and now there is a genuine debate over whether he should keep the shirt for a season-defining trip to Arsenal on Sunday over Trent Alexander-Arnold. The fact that is even a debate at all is testament to Bradley's abilities. Indeed, in a straw poll of Liverpool fans on this reporter's social media, in which around 1,000 readers voted, 55% said that Bradley should get the nod over Alexander-Arnold, the vice-captain and creator-in-chief of the Premier League leaders. Bradley's rise has been nothing short of meteoric. But how did he get from a young lad playing on park pitches in County Tyrone, Northern Ireland to the man that is turning out star performances in the best league in the world? No one is better placed to chart the youngster's rise than Joe McCarry, a legend of the Northern Irish football scene now in his late 70s. I actually was the man who was told about him first of all by a referee who came from Connor's hometown of Castle Derg, McCarry tells Mailsport. He told me he's the best kid he's ever seen and we should get him down to our youth setup at Dingannon. He was eight years old so I laughed and, well, the road from Castle Derg to Dungannon is an awful drive, like a snake's pass. I said I'm not gonna take an eight-year-old and drive him up and down that road three times a week, but thought I would keep an eye out for him. About three years later one of my coaches asked me to go to a wee final in Omar one night, it was St. Patrick's against another team. He said, there's this wee boy called Bradley playing, he's playing two or three years above his age group. I laughed, so I drove to Omar, watched the final. Connor was playing centre-forward, two feet shorter than everybody else and two or three years younger. I spotted his parents and, after the game, introduced myself and invited him down to Dungannon. I 
I spoke to him in the wee cafe we had and he said, we'll have a think about it and come back to you. Bradley actually rejected the approach but realized he'd made the wrong decision a few months later. Fast forward a few years, Dingan and Swifts got a call from Liverpool, who sent two scouts over to check out the facilities at the club, which has spent £2 million on the youth setup. He spent time going back and forth to Merseyside and seasoned academy observers say he is a down-to-earth, quiet lad but a studious professional. Connor and I have been mates the whole way through, Tyler Morton, a Liverpool loney at Hull City, tells Mail Sport. He has turned into a real top player. Everyone at the academy knew he would. Jarrell, Quansa, as well, he's been absolutely brilliant. I've grown up with him and trained with him since I was six or seven. It's lovely to see them do well and represent the club that I love and support. Bradley and Quansa have been huge beneficiaries of the loan market, with the latter spending half of last season at Bristol Rovers, also in League One, and now featuring in 17 first-team matches this term. One of the themes of Clark's reign has been how he always looks at the academy for solutions rather than asking the owners to open the checkbook. The other day, he cited how assistant coaches Pep Linders and Vitor Matos had been, in his ear, for years to promote Bradley. When deciding where to send young stars, Liverpool put a lot of weight into how much they trust the club. After developing Bradley, for example, the Reds chose the Lancashire club to send Calvin Ramsey this month. Fabio Carvalho went to Hull due to their fine work with Morton. Connor has an insatiable desire to keep getting better and that is why I know he will go on to play hundreds of games for Liverpool, said Bolton boss Ian Everett, talking to the Times this week. Indeed, it is hard to find anyone willing to say a bad word about him. Nearly everyone asked to talk about him will use the same words or phrases to describe the 20-year-old, humble, talented and driven. Mum Linda is undoubtedly a big influence, with her acting as an unofficial agent for her son since his early days in football. She was not much of a football fan but has a solid education now having been his taxi driver and negotiated his deals for a decade. It is understood Mrs. Bradley rejected the promise of a professional deal at 17, instead telling Connor to earn his contract through a scholarship.